You ever take a photo that just looks amazing in person, but when you get home and you look at it on your computer, it's kind of flat and kind of dull. The light's not that exciting. The colors are kind of muted and that sort of thing. Well, in Lightroom Classic, there are a few key tools you can use to really bring those landscapes to life, make them pop right off the screen. And it's simple masking and color work. It's very easy to do. This is the photo that I have. And this photo was good. It was 200 seconds at F16. This is Moraine Lake in Canada. Nice long exposure, but it looks kind of blown out and that sort of thing. By the way, I had a 10 stop filter on to get that uh, exposure time. But with a couple of simple moves in Lightroom, I'm able to take it from that to that and really bring it to life. I'm going to hit reset and I'm going to show you how. Okay, as usual, I like to start here in basic and make some, of course, basic adjustments. The first obvious one is the highlights are just way too bright. I pull those down pretty significantly. This is like a negative 77 and I am going to lift the shadows as well. I want to create a little bit more even distribution of light. I like to do that with my base edits just to kind of give me a good view of the overall scene. I'm going to bump the whites up a little bit. So like a 14 or so and the blacks are coming up a little bit as well. Like I said, I'm kind of evening that out, but you can see already I've got a much better looking photo. There it is before and there it is now. So we're kind of off and running. And what I like to do from here is dive into the masking. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about editing in Lightroom Classic, check out my free ebook, which is available to my newsletter subscribers. Set the link down below. It's 17 pages of tips, tricks, and insights to help you get better edits in Lightroom Classic. Now I'm going to jump into masking, as I said, and this uh, recent edition of the landscape uh, masking category is incredibly powerful and so useful. It replaces so much manual work that I used to have to do. And you also notice there's a sky mask, but I've been, when I've got multiple components of a landscape, I've been going straight into landscape because it will go in and identify, as it says here, it'll detect the landscape features, which includes the sky. And so if you know you're going to be using other features, like here I need the mountains and the water as well, and it does a great job of identifying them. As you can see, there's a sky, right? Mountains and water. It pretty much nailed it. But because I know I'm going to use those other components, it's quicker just to use landscape, let it find all the elements, and then I can go in and do each one individually, and it, it finds them quicker and it lets me get to work quicker. So just a little tip for you. Uh, the first thing I want to do is slightly darken this sky. There's still, it's not really blown out, but it's still a little bit too bright there. So I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to pull the highlights down just a little bit. I mean, that looks way better than it did. That's for sure. Uh, a little bit higher on the shadows and I'm actually going to cool it off. Now, uh, I, you saw the final result and I actually amp up the overall warm color tones in the photo. But something I talked about in a previous vid video is that I really like to create some color tension, especially in sunset photos. And having a blue sky kind of behind some warmer clouds is a great way to do that because you can warm up the clouds, but you have that cool sky behind it. So it creates that, that uh, color tension, uh, color contrast. It's the, the yellows and the blue, which are opposite on the color spectrum. So they, uh, they look good. They're complementary colors, right? So it's one of the things I like to do. So made this a little bluer. And then we're going to play up the yellow later as we kind of amp up the overall look of the uh, the colors, which I do after I do masking. But some of the masking also includes a little bit of color work. Now, as I mentioned, the sky mask was great. I'm going to pop back into landscape. And this time, you see how quick that was? I'm just going to grab the water. And it's essentially nailed the water. In fact, I would argue that that's almost 100% perfect. Like, I have no corrections that I really want to make to that. So I'm going to go ahead and create mask and it's ready. And that's why I said when I do landscape, it picks all this for me. It's quicker than doing sky and then going into landscape and getting other things. Let's do it all at one time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump up the exposure here. So maybe like a 15 or so. I'm actually going to lift the highlights. I don't do that too often, but in this case, it's going to brighten those areas a little bit where the clouds are reflected. And I am going to add a little bit of warmth here. So like seven or eight and a little bit of tint as well. So like a 16, 17, something like that. And while I'm at it, I'm, uh, one of the things I like to do with water is smooth it out. And so down here in the effects section, I'm going to take the texture down like a negative 40 or something, just kind of smoothing that out. I'm going to do the same with clarity, like a negative 20 or so. And then dehaze, I actually end up pulling up a little bit to, uh, to the right. So about a positive 16. And so if you look at the water overall, the before and the after, it's a little smoother. It gives a little bit more of that dreamy look, which I like and a little bit better uh, adjustment to the light. So at this point, the sky and the water looks great. And of course, the next thing I want to do is the mountains. So I'm going to go back into landscape, grab mountains. It essentially nails it. Uh, again, nearly perfect. 
and I'm going to go ahead and click Create Mask. So now that that's in place, what I want to do is I want to brighten this a little bit. So like maybe a 25 or so, just, you know, a little quarter of a stop, whatever it might be. I want to make them a little bit brighter, but I do want to add some contrast. Uh, and I'm going to punch up these mountains a little bit with some detail as well here in a minute. I'm going to pull the highlights down just to kind of control the light there on those distant mountains, especially, uh, you know, right up in there. And then I'm going to warm them up a little bit. As you can see, the sun was out of frame to the right and it's hitting those mountains. I want to amp up a little bit of that warm color, but I don't want to overdo it. I am going to give it a little bit of saturation. It's like a 10 or 11, just bumping that up a little bit. And then I'm going to add the positive texture and clarity. So both at about maybe a 20 or so. All I'm trying to do is create a little bit more uh, depth and a little bit more uh, crunch, if you will, especially on that rock face. Now, there is one aspect of what I just did that I don't really love, and that is all these green trees are now a little bit brighter, and I want them to be a tiny bit darker, actually. So that's the beauty of these masks, is you can just go in and you can click Subtract, and I'm going to get a Select Object, and I'm going to come in here and see if this will just grab this section for me and allow me to uh, effectively remove that from the mask. And as you can see, it's done a really fine job. It's missed a couple of things here. So again, you can just click subtract. And this happens sometimes with a mask. We just need to do a little bit of refinement. I'm going to come over here and just erase this just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, a little bit on that ridge line as well. And I think we're all set. And now the mask is absolutely just exactly where I wanted it to be. I've made all my edits. And let me hide the overlay. So if you look at the before and after, there's the before, a little bit less, it feels like less depth to me, and definitely less crunch, and etc. And now the after just looks a whole lot better to me. I, I always like to bring up the little bit of uh, crunch, if you will. That's the term I like to use uh, for adding like, texture and clarity to something. Uh, I've removed the trees. I've really balanced that out. So now if you look at all the masks overall, kind of combined what it's done to the photo, there it is with just what I did in develop, which made a huge difference, especially pulling back those highlights because it looked like it was blown out wasn't really blown out except for a little bit and I was able to recover that but if you look at that before all the masking and now after the masking I've got a much better image and now I'm done with masking what I want to do is just make some further refinements to the image and then I've got one little thing I do at the end to kind of bring it to the uh, the last uh, you know get it over the finish line if you will uh, for me calibration which I talk about in that ebook as I said that link is down below but calibration absolutely amazing tool I love it it's my favorite color tool and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drag the saturation of the blues to about a 25. The green, I go pretty high. I go to about a 70, 71. And the red, I'm going to high 60s as well. Now that might be kind of high. I don't always recommend using all three tools. And I don't recommend always going really high. In this photo, it's mostly working. It's a little bit intense in some of that yellow and blue. And I'm going to show you how I adjust that. Uh, but I did not adjust the hues. And what I find with landscapes is unless it's something like fall foliage that I'm really trying to enhance, I don't mess with the hues too much on calibration. But overall, from a color standpoint, it's made a huge difference in the photo in terms of the overall vibrance. So there's before calibration and there's after. But like I said, it's a little bit too much, and that's where Color Mixer comes in, and specific, uh, specifically point color. I love to come in with that. I'm going to grab this yellow, and what I want to do is just take that saturation down a little bit. And so I'm going to tame that a little bit, and I might actually brighten it a tad as well. Just a little bit to amp up that golden light from other side of the mountain coming in and hitting that. And then the other thing I want to do is grab a little bit of this blue here where it's a little bit too much. Uh, and honestly, it's incredibly uh, blue because of the glacier and all the minerals that are in the lake. Uh, you've seen photos of this if you haven't been. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But it's very blue. But that was getting a little bit too blue. So now with these adjustments to Color Mixer, I think it looks a little bit better. So there it is before, a little bit too intense in the yellows and blues. And then after now, a little bit tamer. I think that looks a little bit better. And the only other thing I want to do, and this is something I like to do at the end of an edit, is go back into my basic and actually want to adjust the temperature and tint a little bit. I'm going to warm this up a little bit overall just to give it a little bit more flair. So maybe like a 67, 6800, uh, 69. Let's try that. I'll maybe pull it back a little bit. Uh, and then I want to add some tint as well. And I'm going to go into like the low 20s here. Uh, 23, I think, looks fine. Now that amps up to me the overall look of the photo, but also that tint, it works nicely with the rock and the mountain. It gives it a little bit more character, I think, than it looked beforehand. And so uh, that is something I often do at the end after I've done other color adjustments, just to come back and adjust the color, uh, the temperature and the tint to sort of complement what I've already done. 
And what I end up with overall is a nicely balanced light, nicely uh, co a nice color uh, look overall, and a nice color contrast or color tension that I talked about. And it's really easy to do. Landscape mask, three of them. It basically did it for me. I had to do one adjustment to the trees, but honestly, the masks were nearly instantaneous with some simple light and color and detail adjustments. And then uh, a little bit of color work afterwards, and I'm done. And that's how you take a, a landscape like that that it looked amazing in person, but the, the file, the raw file, looked kind of flat and lifeless. They always need editing, but this was allow uh, these moves allowed me to take it from that to that, turn it into something that really pops off the screen that's how I do it in Lightroom Classic. Hope it gives you some ideas about how I use this tool and what you can do with your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.